So, hello everyone. My name is Shuo Chen, and uh, I'm a data scientist at Blazor Entertainment. And today I'm happy to talk to you about my PhD research work done with my PhD advisor, Torsten Joachim, at Cornell University. So, many people love sports. That's why a lot of time we want to predict the outcome ahead of the time. Suppose we want to predict for the coming up big game between Federal and Nadal. There are many features that could go into the predictive model, right? For example, uh, probably the most important one are the identity of the two players. And in this case, they are Nadal and Federer. However, there are many features associated with each of the diff two different players. For example, their world ranking, their ages, their world ranking points, uh, how many tournaments they have played so far this year, are they just recovered from injury, and they are maybe about like recent game records. These features are different for the two different players. We call them the player features. However, there are another set of features that could affect the outcome of the game. For example, what surfaces did they play on? How is the weather? What is the format? Is it best of three or best of five? Sometimes even how much is the prize money? Even like who the referee is? How important is the match? Is it like group stage or is it finals? These features are the same for the two different players. However, they could affect the two different players quite differently. And we call them the game features. This player feature game feature breakdown could also arise in some other pairwise comparison scenario. Uh, for example, if I want to pick one of the two restaurants to go to, which one should I prefer? Or which restaurant wins? There are player features for diff the two different restaurants. What food do they serve? Do they have AC or Wi-Fi? How far away are they? What are their Yelp scores? And there are game features, which are the same for the two different uh, restaurants. Am I going there for breakfast, lunch, or dinner? How hungry am I? Am I going there by myself or with my friends? So uh, in our work, we propose a general framework for predicting pairwise matchups or comparison that incorporates both player and game features. And it can be trained from pairwise preferences without need for any uh, cardinal readings. And can, one nice feature about this model is that it can also can handle the intransitivity among players, which I'll, well, I'll get, uh, get to very soon. Let me start by telling you about the bradley turing model, which is uh, kind of the fundamental of the pairwise comparison. Actually, the fundamental work in, uh, in pairwise comparison was established as early as the 1920s, which later leads to the well-known bradley turing model in the 1950s and later led to uh, famous things uh, like ELO rating, which is like widely used uh, in chess and other like video games. So for the bradley turing model, the core idea is to learn trying to represent each of the player with one number, gamma, here. So basically, this number gamma stands for how good you are, or like your absolute strength. So when two, uh, two players play against each other, the probability of A beats B it is proportional to the exponential of that player's gamma value, his absolute, absolute strength, which uh, can be written down this form or further written down like this, which takes the form of a sigmoid function, S, of uh, M of A and B, this M function. We call this M function the matchup function. Basically, it measures the edge given to player A when he is playing against player B. And in the case of bradley turing model, it's just gamma A minus gamma B the difference between the two players' absolute strength. And uh, for the bradley turing model, it basically says, if my number is bigger than yours, I have better chance of beating you than you beating me, right? However, if, if you only use one number to represent how good a player is, sometimes you'll fail to model some like, subtle scenario like this, rock, paper, scissor. You're never going to assign three numbers who correctly represent the intransitivity relation among them, right? So in our uh, previous work published earlier this year in Wisdom 2016, we proposed propose a different model, which is called the Blade Chess model. So let me tell you why. Uh, instead of doing this comparing numbers like bradley turing model does, we propose uh, to represent each of the player with two vectors. And uh, we imagine that the two players are actually in a sword fight or sword duel. So there are two important spots for each of the player. One is his blade. The other is his chest. So who is more likely to win? According to our model, if my blade is closer to your chest than your blade to my chest, I have a better chance of winning. So uh, in this case, A's blade on the left, player A, is a lot closer to B's chest than B's blade to A's chest when you compare the two like blue, blue lines. So according to our model, 
A has a better chance of beating B than B beating A. So instead of, uh, we're going to use a similar framework, S of M of A and B, but instead of doing our gamma A minus gamma B, what we did here is basically just computing the difference between the blade vectors and chest vectors. Or, uh, in our experiment, sometimes we realize it, it's actually better to replace the Euclidean distance, like here, with the inner product. So we call this two different models, the blade chest disk model and blade chest inner model. The blade chest disk model actually has a better visualization. For example, if you, we train the blade chest disk model on, uh, on the uh, rock, paper, scissors relation, you can, we can see the trans intransitivity among the three players are nicely captured. Or if you play, uh, prefer something graphical, it's basically this is what we did. So that's for our wisdom work. So next step is we talk about we want to add different feature into this framework. So the next step, uh, next step is about adding the player feature. So how are we going to do this? In our wisdom work, we only, we kind of trying to learn the embedding or representation of the each player. Each player is represented by a blade vector and a chess vector. Now we want to build the link between the blade vectors and chess vectors and the player's original feature vectors, xA for player A and xB for player B. So how are we going to do it? We basically just use some simple mapping, which is uh, use matrix B to map it, linearly map it into the blade vector space, and use uh, matrix C to map it, linear map it to, into the chess vector space. And on top of that, we did some uh, activation function. This F is an activation function. It could be just identity function, which is just a linear mapping. Or we can follow some uh, popular choices in neural nets and uh, pick in the tangent, hyperbolic tangent function, which is a nonlinear non -linear mapping. So that solves the problem of adding the player feature. The next step is about, the, finally, we want to add the game feature. So we actually explore, explore two different ways to add the game feature. What, the one way is that we think the game feature maybe should be treated as the same as the player feature. So it's like I'm like what, ranking 200, like 51, and I'm playing the final. We, we want to treat this two type of feature the same. So what we did is just simply concatenate the player feature and the game feature. So the whole pipeline looks like this. So we have a different player feature and same game feature. We concatenate them for the two different players, passing them through the like B and C module, map them into the blade vector space and chess vector space, use a matchup function to combine them into a value, pass it through the sigmoid function, and eventually get the probability of A beats B, given this game G. Or Another way of adding the play, uh, game feature is that we want to explicitly model how the game actually warps the player's performances. So suppose like I'm playing tennis on a, like maybe grass court, which makes the ball travel a lot faster, which actually makes the player with better serve even stronger. So we want to explicitly model the interaction between the game feature and player feature. So what we did was something like this. We separately, they, uh, this training option is called split. So we separately match the player features into, we use the B and C match them into the blade and vector space. And for the game feature, we separately use a different time, a different set of module, B prime and C prime, match them into the same place. And at the blade chess layer, we do the Hadamard product or element wise product to combine them into the blade vectors and chess vectors. And eventually, we do a uh, match function, we do sig sigmoid function, and get the probability of A, B, B given game G. So both of these two pipelines can be trained via back propagation. Next up is the experiment. So we basically do the typical like training, validation, and testing. And on the testing data set, we look at the test average log likelihood and also test accuracy. For the test accuracy, we basically it says, according to our training model, A in this scenario is going to beat B with more than 50% of chance. So we're going to say A is going to win and see how accurate that is. That's our accuracy. So uh, for the baselines, uh, we compare with this baseline. First one is road learning, which is just essentially go back into your training data set and count how many times A beats B and B beats A. But a lot of time, A never played against B. So we have to do some smoothing. So what we did here is just add one smoothing. And we also did the valley turn model. And we also compare with the uh, true scale model, which is a popular uh, model developed by Microsoft Research, which is later widely used in the Xbox online services. And we are, for these three models, we only compare, uh, they can only handle the identity of the players. 
and we also extend the Bradley Turing model into a, what we call a pairwise logistic regression model, which instead of just learning that gamma, we're trying to use a linear mapping W to map player feature into that gamma. So in that way, we can actually handle both identity feature, the player's identity and the any player features. However, we still cannot handle any game features. Uh, so for our model, because our model can handle all these features, so we will actually want to input, uh, input different like, level information from feature list, which is just putting in the identity and then adding the player feature, and eventually adding both player feature and game feature and see how that helps the performances. So we first tested a bunch of uh, synthetic data sets. Um, for synthetic data set, the uh, good thing about them is that we, because we generated them, so we can actually compute uh, uh, compute the best uh, possible limit for a, that any possible like method can achieve, and we can compare that with with our methods. And we use this synthetic data set to simulate some uh, real world scenario scenarios. For example, we add in player feature, which is called the home field advantage. If player is playing at home, he's ten percent more likely to win. And we also add in different game features. For example, for this data set, we add in the, the game feature, which is called the weather. And the weather could be normal, which just give you normal, like matchup probability between two players. Or the weather could be extremely good. In that case, the favorite player is def def deterministically going to win. So in that case, we observe that our model, in terms of log likelihood, can achieve the, the, the red line is our model with all the information, can achieve the best possible limit, the black line. Uh, black line quite nicely as we have more and more games. And for the accuracy, uh, because this uh, data set is kind of uh, simple, because a lot of games are deterministic, so our model is not always the best, but still it's among those, uh, among those methods that can approach the theoretical best limit. And we also test the, uh, the, uh, another end of the spectrum, which is the, best, the weather could be extremely bad. So, when the weather is extremely bad, we are going to say it's going to make like it's go going to make the game totally chaotic. It's like going to 50-50 coin flip. So in that case, we generally we still have for our method can as we have more and more games, they can approach the theoretical best limit quite nicely, and uh, and it also most of the time all perform all the baselines. And we also generally observe as we input more and more information, we get better and better performances out of it. So after testing all the synthetic data set, we're quite confident of our model. So the next step is moving on to the real world data set. So for the real world data set, we first look at the tennis data set. So the tennis data set, there are two parts. One is WTA for women's competition, and the other is ATP is for men's competition. Is I think we believe we get the tournament result for the last uh, ten or eight years. Uh, and for the player features, we are using their world ranking, world ranking points, the recent game records, and also using some uh, betting odds crowd from some uh, third party uh, online betting companies or online, online website. And for the player, uh, for the game feature, we use what surfaces do they play on? Is it indoor event or outdoor event? Uh, and uh, also, uh, indoor event and outdoor event, and also how important that match is, is the final or semi-final or just group stage. So there are more features in the, described in the paper. And apart from the uh, tennis data set, which is a real world sports, we also look at the online competitive video game. Uh, this video game is uh, also known as uh, eSports. This video game is called, called StarCraft II, which uh, it was developed by my current employer, Blizzard Entertainment. And uh, in this game, there are two players facing off against each other, each of them trying to build an army and wipe out the other player's force. So each of the player actually can have a choice of what type of army he wants to control in the game, which is called the in-game race. So that is a player feature. And also we are using features like player features like the nationality of the player, because for the, if you're familiar with the StarCraft scene, a uh, player from certain regions is known to be stronger than player from other regions. And uh, also using feature like we call some uh, players rating and STD, feature, STD features from some third, uh, third party website. That's a player feature. For the game feature, we use uh, what stage is the game at. Because they keep patching the game, adding the new dispensions, which kind of slightly change the game. So we use that as a game feature. And we also use whether that game is played on, in an online tournament or offline tournament. 
And we also crawled a bunch of keyword features, including like DreamHack, uh, which is a well-known esports event, and maybe uh, Europe, uh, Asia, uh, group stage, final. OK. So we use all those features. And uh, in term, terms of results, we generally observe that our method, uh, the, the last block is our method, and uh, we, the best result happens in the last block, which is our method. And uh, in terms of what like training choices we should use, uh, we actually observe that uh, there could be, uh, we, we observe that in general we should do the nonlinear mapping, nonlinear mapping with the hyperbolic tangent function. But sometimes concat option is better on like tennis data set, and sometimes split is better on the StarCraft data set. And finally, we are looking at the the part the, the the data set I just talked about are the competitive data set. And for this part, we're going to talk about the preferences data set among players. So um, among like restaurant or food or movies. Uh, this data set are from the uh, literature of uh, context aware recommendation system. However, here, instead of uh, predicting any rating, we want to predict who is more likely to win in a pairwise comparison. And unfortunately, we don't get any player feature, additional player feature for these uh, candidates. But we have the context feature or the game feature. So for food data set, we have how hungry are you, and uh, is that hungry level supposed or real? And for the restaurant data set, we have uh, are you going there for, uh, from work or from from home, or are you going there on weekdays or weekend? And for movie data set, also weekday and weekend, uh, and also are you going there by yourself or with friends or with your family? The trend is similar. We have the best result, and uh, we should use a nonlinear mapping. Uh, sometimes uh, concat works better. Sometimes split works better. So that's about it. So to summarize, uh, we propose a general framework for modeling matchups and comparison with player and game features. The results on the synthetic data set demonstrate that its ability in approaching the theoretical best limit. And also, we showed on the real world data set, both game uh, competitive data set and preference data set, that the advantage of utilizing these uh, additional features with our model. And also, we want to thank these three people for their contribution. And finally, uh, I have uh, all the code and data set uploaded to web my website for you to check out. And uh, also, as a final note, maybe a lot of people don't know that we have a data science team at Blizzard, and we are hiring. If you are good with machine learning and uh, data mining, and also passionate about video games, I think we have the perfect job for you. With that, I'd like to thank you, and happy to take any questions. Did you do a feature importance analysis for the tennis data set? What was that? Feature importance, did you look at the feature uh, Actually, I did. Uh, there are more details, but uh, I think the most effective t features are, are the, actually the all betting odds feature from other betting company. Because essentially, if you was, we're using those features, we're essentially bootstrapping from their like, predictive oh, model, right? Yeah, that's Makes what sense. I want to know. Thank yeah, you yeah, yeah. Much. But we have more like comparison in the paper. Please check it out. Uh, I was just wondering when we showed you showed us the accuracy. There yep. was at some point there was a sharp uh, increase. Yeah. I was just wondering if you had you knew why that happened. Sharp increase. Yeah. Uh, like this. Yeah. Uh, actually, I don't have. I I don't know honestly. Okay. Sorry. Yeah, if there are no other questions, let's thank the speaker again. Yeah. Thank you.